two Stuart Sirius steam engines. Part 4. Removing the flywheel, changing some 4BA bolts and painting the engine parts with etching primer. If you watched the previous episode then you will have noticed that I put all of the engine parts in the ultrasonic cleaner which did remove most of the paint. But I did put the engine parts in a bath of cellulose thinners overnight. And now as you can see all of the paint has gone and the individual parts are thoroughly degreased. I'm still embarrassed about this, so I'll show it again. This is the flywheel problem. Even though I had removed the grub screw, it was still tight on the shaft. I didn't notice that there were two grub screws in the flywheel, and once I removed the second grub screw, the flywheel slid off the crankshaft. You may be wondering, why are there two bolts missing from the bearing at the end? These two to be exact. The reason I removed them was I needed them to hold the steam chest onto the top of the cylinder. One of these bolts was sheared off and I managed to get the broken part out of the casting. And I don't know where the other one went, it's somewhere in my workshop in the house. Currently I'm in my main workshop, the one with the machine tools. And here I'm showing just how free the pistons are in the bores. As well as showing how well machined the cylinder bores are. What I'm going to do is replace these 4BA bolts with some Allen cap head bolts. It's very unusual for me to use Allen cap head bolts on steam engines, unless of course they aren't very visible, and in this position these Allen cap head bolts aren't very visible because the flywheel covers them. Inside the engine the big end bearings are held together using similar 4BA cap head bolts. In my workshop I have a good selection of 4BA hexagon bolts, none of them with heads of this size. I have noticed that a lot of Stuart models do use bolts with different sized heads. I will put these two in a safe place for use at another time. With the bearing securely held to the casting it's time to look at this part. This is a piece of anodized steel cladding but unfortunately there is some damage to it. So first of all I'm rubbing it down with some wet to dry sandpaper. This will remove the rust from the part and also smooth out any unevenness. I will of course be painting this, and I'll do that very shortly in this episode. I went over the cladding with the wet to dry sandpaper a couple of times, so I didn't miss any parts. Now it's time to start the painting. I'm going to spray the cladding, the aluminium base and the steam chest cover in the outer part of the workshop. As you can see, I'm painting the parts on an upturned plastic tub. This makes it very easy and convenient to rotate the parts as I spray them. I have been told in the past that I paint things wrong by several experts. But I don't know this, and the paint never seems to fall off or crack, so I think I'll just continue the way I normally do. If you watch what I'm doing, I am actually applying thin coats of paint to the part. But I frequently rotate what I'm spraying, so it looks like I'm putting a lot on at once, and I'm not. For this job, I'm using self-etched grey primer, not the high build stuff that I frequently use. For the castings, I will be using some high build primer. It appears to be much thicker paint than this. And I've also noticed that the high build primer doesn't brush quite as well as the stuff I'm currently using. I'm spraying this as you can clearly see, but when it comes down to the main part of the engine, I am going to brush the primer on I think. Sorry about the noise when I moved the plastic box, I should have used my turntable for this. But never mind, in no time at all, the base is painted. Now it's time for the steam chest. Same principle, fairly thin coats but rotating frequently. It's quite warm in the outer part of the workshop today, which is a good thing, and the paint is drying very quickly. I think I will end up spray painting the engine entirely, using green, just for a change. I have a spare can of Phoenix Precision Paints Great Western Railways Green. For now though, I'm still using etching primer, and here I am back in the main part of the workshop, squirting some of this paint into an aerosol can cap. You can clearly see how thin the paint is, but it does the job. But don't forget, as you use it, it's starting to thicken up a little bit in the pot because the solvent is evaporating. The only reason I'm using a brush is because I actually like painting things like this with small paintbrushes. 
and am working the paint into all the nooks and crannies of the casting. I have found that when spraying castings it's very easy to miss bits, or get too much paint in certain areas, like around the lettering. After this initial brushed coat though, I think I will mask up the engine and then spray on a coat of high build etching primer, which after a period of 24 hours will be followed by the top coat colour. And that is it for this video, short and sweet and straight to the point. Here's a bonus, you can see the paint drying in this clip. And to conclude, I've placed all of the parts I've been using in a very artistic pose on the bench. That's it for this one, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.